Oh, the Apple refurb store. What do we have for Macs? An iMac with an i7 2020. How about that? And $350 off? <laughs> no way, not with the new iMacs coming out. Mm. Nah. Hey, I'm Jerry. And yes, I did just buy another Intel-based iMac, but I'm actually super excited. You might think I'm an idiot for buying an Intel iMac at this point in 2021, but I needed slash wanted one again. And despite all of the rumors of the impending 2021 iMac refresh, I think there are still some good reasons that you might wanna pick one up as well. So let's just start with some of the rumors, why maybe you shouldn't pay attention to them just yet, and why an Intel-based iMac should still be considered. If you read the internet or come across some big video sharing websites, you have no doubt been inundated with posts about the upcoming iMac refresh. The updates seem to be coming almost every day now with new information about an updated look matching Apple's Pro Display XDR, removing chin and bezels, bigger displays, different colors, and of course, a new M1X Apple Silicon chip. You know, pretty much everything everyone would want from a new iMac. And it all sounds amazing, and most of it is probable. I mean, who wouldn't want an M1-based iMac with an additional four performance cores and eight more GPU cores in a brand new modern design with an even better display? I know I do, and I'll definitely be buying one as soon as they are announced. But the problem is, we don't actually know when they're going to be announced. Sure, Apple did say that the Apple Silicon transition will be completed within two years of the announcement from last year's WWDC. And with all of the posts and rumors, it must mean that they're coming out this month or at least by WWDC, but not so fast. We have actually been hearing rumors of a new iMac design since the end of 2019. So if you started waiting since the rumors started, you've been waiting a long time for a new iMac when you could have just bought one and used it for the last 18 months. In January of 2020, Max Tech predicted an updated iMac design in 2020. In April of 2020, iLounge said that the rumor mill now suggests that a new 23-inch iMac is under work for release in the fourth quarter of 2020, with mass production beginning in the third quarter of 2020. It's clear that 2020 will be the year when Apple releases a new iMac. And in June of last year, Mac Rumors said Apple plans to launch a 24-inch iMac with a new design in the fourth quarter of 2020. This redesigned iMac will be one of Apple's first two Mac computers with a custom ARM-based processor. Well, we did get an updated iMac in August of last year that made all flash storage the standard and removed the fusion drives, updated FaceTime cameras to 1080p, updated the display to add True Tone, HDR, and a nano texture matte option, added the T2 chip for added security, drive speed, faster video encoding, and increased audio base response, updated 10th gen Intel processors with up to 10 cores, and updated RDNA graphics. All in all, it was a really solid update to the 27 inch iMac, and I immediately returned the 2019 refurb I had bought and picked up the mid-range 27 inch iMac. But this was not the refreshed new iMac design with Apple Silicon, that all of the analysts were saying we were going to get. We are now almost 18 months in since the leaks said it was coming, and we still have no idea when it is coming. I mean, heck, it could be announced tomorrow after I post this video, or it could be next spring. We just have no idea when it will come and exactly what specs it will have, and if the performance will actually be better overall compared to the core Intel iMacs that are available right now. So you might be wondering why I bought an Intel iMac if I already had a 2020 iMac. Well, when the first Apple Silicon Mac shipped with the M1 processor, I was under the hype spell as much as anyone. These M1 MacBooks seem too good to be true with their amazing performance benchmarks, along with cool and silent operation. The MacBook Pro M1 became the device I wanted to use all of the time. Although not as powerful as my mid-range iMac in most tests, it was powerful enough for what I was doing both in terms of work and my YouTube video editing. I like the idea of having a single computer to do everything at my desk and on the couch without needing to switch between devices. 
I put my iMac aside for a while to build out my MacBook Pro desktop setup, and after some time, decided to sell the iMac. Since selling my iMac, many things have become clear to me, and I've realized that using a MacBook as a desktop replacement is just no real match for a desktop. Funny enough, I made a video about this a few months ago and just completely disregarded my own advice. Using a MacBook as a desktop comes with challenges like finding an external display that isn't just hot garbage. Because seriously, I've spent probably 50 hours researching displays, trying to find one that can match the iMac in its all around performance. If you want a high resolution display, 4K is pretty much what you can find on the market, but the native resolution makes everything too small, even on a 32 inch display. So you need to scale things down, which can have a performance impact. Many third party displays have hundreds of comments complaining about all sorts of issues like screen retention, bad pixels, backlight bleed, color accuracy, and even build quality. Even the Apple certified LG 5K display has consistency issues with backlights, retention, and colors, and not to mention the ugly plastic wobbly design. Even if you find a great display, there's a good chance that you will have display connection issues with a MacBook like what I've detailed in previous videos, including inverted colors using HDMI or weird distortions when waking from sleep, which requires either a disconnect and reconnect to the cable or a reboot of the computer. Then there's just the simplicity of using an iMac on a desk versus a MacBook. It's such a clean setup with less clutter from things like docks and adapters, which are needed to extend the limited amount of ports on MacBooks, but which the iMac has built in on the back. With speakers, mics, camera, SD card reader, and display all built in, there's so much less stuff crowding your workspace. And if you do need to connect something like an external drive, all you really need is the drive and you don't need a bunch of additional cables or power adapters. Reducing adapters also reduces potential issues. For example, when I connect my MacBook Pro to a dock that has built-in Ethernet, frequently the MacBook will just keep using Wi-Fi as the active network adapter rather than switching to Ethernet. This is most noticeable for me when I'm on work video calls or copying files to or from my Synology NAS. I will notice a slow copy speed and look at which adapter my computer is using with the help of iStatistica. To fix it, I need to disconnect from my Wi-Fi connection even though I have the network settings set to prefer the Ethernet connection inside of system preferences. When I undock, I need to remember to re-enable Wi-Fi, and it's not a huge deal, but it's something I have to do that I shouldn't need to. So really, the iMac is simply a better overall desktop experience. It has a cleaner setup, it's more reliable in my experience, and requires less finagling to actually make things work. And overall, I feel like I'm more productive and can work faster from an iMac with less to be concerned about. Now. If you're holding off because Apple Silicon is obviously the future of the Mac, there are still some things to keep in mind that make an Intel iMac worth considering. First is app compatibility. Every Mac program is still written and optimized for Intel. Many apps have been updated to support Apple Silicon and some apps may actually run just as fast or maybe slightly better on Apple Silicon, depending on you know the app. But there aren't many apps that have been created only for Apple Silicon, save for some iOS apps that can now run on the M1 Macs. This means that you will not have any issues running current or updated apps on the Intel iMacs. There is no Rosetta translation process, no bugs from being newly optimized in a universal format to run on new hardware. All of your apps will just work without question. And as for iOS apps on Mac, they're not great because they're built for touch. The only one I use on a regular basis is Authy, which actually has a regular Mac version anyway. As far as app compatibility, I would also lump in Bootcamp as something that the M1 Macs simply can't do. If you want the option of running Windows natively on your Mac for any specific applications or even some gaming, depending on the model, then the Intel iMac is your best bet. The second thing to keep in mind is RAM expansion. If you have heavy workloads like 3D rendering app Blender, some kind of data analysis tool, or just someone who uses a lot of apps at the same time, you probably need a lot of RAM. Apple Silicon chips combine the RAM into a unified package with the processor for some obvious performance benefits. But those benefits only go so far before you're swapping a lot to your internal storage SSD, which can only be prevented or lessened by adding more physical RAM. With the 2020 Intel iMac, you can get up to 128 gigabytes of real memory, which can help with those heavy workloads or even things like video. Even in this video export test, I was able to complete the export 15% faster by adding additional RAM to the existing eight gigabytes of memory that came with the iMac. And if you're curious, I'm using the 64 gigabyte kit from OWC, which I'll leave a link to in the description below. 
The third thing to keep in mind is that even if you buy an Intel iMac now and decide to sell it later for an Apple Silicon iMac, you may not actually lose that much money. If we look at the site Swappa, you can see some 2020 MacBook Airs with an i3 just sold between $785 and $845. And that's six months after the release of the M1 MacBook Airs. And if there was ever going to be a clear difference between an Intel-based Mac and an Apple Silicon Mac, then the MacBook Air is that example. The recent Intel MacBook Airs were absolute garbage in terms of performance, heat, battery life, and noise compared to the M1 MacBook version. But there are still people that need Intel-based Macs for certain reasons, so any potential loss by buying an iMac now and selling it later should be minimized by the need that some people still have for Intel-based machines. And even better than that, you should check out the Apple Refurb site for an amazing deal on a 2020 iMac, which is what I did. The high-end 2020 iMac sells for $2,300 in the US normally, but I was able to save $350 buying refurbished for the same eight core i7 with the 5500 XT graphics card and 512 gigabytes of storage, thereby reducing any potential loss if I decide to sell this iMac in a few months. These refurb iMacs from Apple go through a stringent process of cleaning and parts replacements, so you essentially get a brand new iMac with a full warranty with the only difference really being the box that it comes in. And if you want, you can also use some of that savings by buying refurb on extra RAM. So overall, yes, I'm super happy that I just bought another iMac. Again, despite the rumors of the new iMacs that may or may not be coming in the near future, the 2020 Intel iMac solves a number of issues for me and will make my desktop computer experience more reliable than using a MacBook. This all-in-one design and amazing 5K display will allow me to be more productive and keep a more tidy setup. If the new iMac does not end up coming until the end of the year or early next year, I'll be super happy that I bought this now instead of waiting. And if the new iMac is announced in a couple of weeks or even announced before this video goes live, then... But what do you think? Are you expecting new iMacs before summer or are you looking at getting an Intel iMac now? Let me know why below. If you're looking for another comparison between using an iMac and using a MacBook as a desktop, I got the video for you right over here. Hit the thumbs up button if you liked it, hit subscribe if you want, and I'll see you next time.